Hey everybody, Dan Orks Harrison here and welcome to the Mobile Addicts Patch 1020 tier list. You might have been able to tell, I'm not Flares or Moriarty, I'm part of a new tier list team and with me we're bringing in challenger expert Shikari, only command attack in Yen. All four have extensive competitive experience and we will be utilising that insight into their roles to help optimise our tier lists. So there's going to be a couple of changes to the format. First of all, this will no longer be a low elo specific tier list. We felt that it was better to make a more general tier list so that more accurately represents the strength of the champions. We use a combination of statistics at the plat plus level and the insight from our experts to tailor the tier list. This will still apply below and above plat, but it's the most generalized bracket. If you watch these videos a lot, you'll notice some big changes between this list and the previous one, but let's get you up to speed on what is strong this patch. For top lane, our S tier roster is Fiora, Darius, Shen, Lulu, Ergot, Maokai and Jax, with god tier champs Camille and Malphite. There's quite a bit of movement, mostly due to us moving the scope away from low elo. This applies heavily to champions like Nasus, Trindamir and Garen. We've also seen some upward movement from Camille, Kled and Rengar, as these picks are trickier to manoeuvre, but have been effectively shown their strength at the plat plus level. Camille is one of our new additions to the god tier. Stat wise at lower ranks, she is not the most standout champion, but she is one of the best as you climb and definitely want to practice and learn. Everyone is familiar with Camille's scaling and ability to split push, but what makes her really excel is her ability to handle bad matchups and to opt into team fights far better than other split pushers can. Utilising Grasp of the Undying, even bad matchups like Renekton can be managed with good play, and any lane that doesn't crush Camille will struggle to deal with her later down the line. Combine that with her insane ability to isolate backline carries utilising her ult, and it's no surprise she's in the god tier. Camille can do it all. Now onto Lulu, and Lulu is a pick that we highlighted last patch as something that was emerging on the Chinese super server, but we're now fully on the Lulu hype train as this pick is incredibly difficult to deal with. Lulu doesn't require much gold income to become super valuable in the later stages of the game, utilising tools like her whimsy and wild growth to bolster her teammates. On top of her incredible scaling, her early game laning is obnoxious to deal with. Into melee matchups, she will consistently harass you, and any attempts to engage will be met with a swift polymorph, rendering her opponent useless. I cannot emphasize enough how powerful her W Whimsy is, a point and click ability that silences, disarms, and slows your opponent that can also be used on allies to give them movement speed and attack speed. This ability is, in my opinion, the strongest non ultimate ability in the game. The Twisted Train is our final S tier top lane pick for the patch. Maokai boasts a 53.5% win rate on the previous patch, and even with the nerves to his Q damage in the mid game, he is still firmly deserving of this spot. Maokai's strength comes in from his consistency. Just by having a strong tank with CC, he drastically increases your team's ability to team fight, and even if set behind, Maokai can still remain relevant with low amounts of gold. In the current meta, contesting high value neutral objectives like Dragon Soul is really important, so being able to join team fights is vital, and Maokai excels at that. Combine that with strong gank setup, decent wave clear, and an ability to hold his own in most matchups early, Maokai is a standout pick for the current patch. Definitely something I'd recommend for any players who find themselves off rolled into top lane, or for someone who wants an easier to pilot game. Now, moving over to jungle. Our S tier roster is Graves, Kane, Karthus, Echo and Kha'Zix, with Hecarim and Nunu in god tier. In terms of movement, a lot of the easy to execute junglers like Vi and Warwick have been moved down a bit as they're not as successful at high elos, and we've also seen some of the trickier junglers like Lilia, Nidalee and Karthus start to move up the ranks. Now up first, we're going to take a closer look at Nunu. Despite some nerfs to his base armour, Nunu is still a huge menace in the jungle. His ability to clear healthily, secure neutral objectives, and drop a snowball on enemy laners make him a great facilitator for his team. There isn't much more annoying than seeing that giant snowball roll into your lane, knowing there isn't much you can do except flash. Transitioning to the mid game, he becomes a bit too tanky for most champs to cut through quickly, and is great at providing zone control with his ultimate, Absolute Zero. Recently, we've seen a lot more phase rush Nunu at high elos. It makes it incredibly easy for him to land his snowball route and keep up with his targets. Now next up is Lilia. Now Lilia is in a bit of a unique spot where if you ask any pro player they will say she is completely broken, but she's still struggling to reflect that in her solo queue stats. Ultimately our verdict is she has huge potential but is hard to execute on. Her clear speed and skirmishing is absolutely top tier, but she prances on the edge of danger and overextensions can easily result in her getting blown up. If you're looking to play Lilia yourself, 
then make sure you're consistently farming your camps to utilize your clear speed. And when it comes to skirmishes and team fights, try and wait for heavy crowd control tools to be on cooldown before going aggressive and looking for that game winning five person lilting lullaby. Finally, and coming in with a big recommendation from our jungle expert only, is Karthus. Karthus received similar treatment to Nunu in a base armor nerf, but ultimately this does not prevent him from laying waste to the jungle in platinum and above. His clear speed is top tier, and in the current meta that can allow you to find huge level advantages over the opposing jungler. Assisting your laners is as easy as pressing your R key, and when it comes to teamfights you have huge zone control and damage output that won't even be prevented by taking you down. One thing to be aware of is early invades when your team isn't in a position to defend you, so try and make sure you keep track of where the enemy jungle starts so they can't pull a fast one. Next up is mid lane. Our S tier roster is Annie, Galio, Yone, Talon, Yasuo, Katarina, and alone in god tier is Zed. There's a lot of movement in mid lane, there's a big shift from low elo to plat plus and it's by far the most diverse lane in terms of picks. You'll notice some of the staple competitive picks like Cassiopeia, Lucian and Syndra have been bumped up and the likes of Ari and Fizz have been relegated slightly. Opening up, we're going to take a look at Galio. His big strengths are his ability to contest wave priority, skirmish incredibly well and most obviously roam with his ultimate. Junglers love when you play Galio as it facilitates them to be more aggressive knowing that you'll have their back. Galio is a powerhouse in the early mid game, but even in the later stages you're still capable of finding multi-person taunts and carrying team fights. Now the build shown is for Aftershock, but if you're feeling a bit more confident then I'd recommend trying the Predator build that's been showing up at higher elos. You don't have the safety net of Aftershock, but your roaming potential and ability to enter into fights is amplified and it allows you to take over the map. Now speaking of roaming mid laners, our next pick is Pike. Pike's play rate isn't huge, but he's been tearing up the games he's in at Plat Plus. His ability to move top or bot lane and set up plays is difficult to match, and combine that with his ult share in gold, and this champion is incredibly effective at snowballing. One big tip for Pike is to grab a sweeper when you picked up your tier 2 boots, and try and clear vision around mid lane as best as possible. Not only does this allow you to go for roams to the side lane, but if the enemy mid laner tries to push out the wave, you can gank your own lane from the fog of war. Annie is next up as she is performing so well right now, it's a little bit crazy. Her win rate at plat plus is over 54% and it's down to her consistency. She's easy to farm with, she's easy to play and she's highly impactful if you can land a big Tibbers. Similar to the other two picks, she's also incredibly effective at roaming, which is a little bit of a running theme in the current meta and really there's nothing better than going for a quick trip to bot lane and picking up a double kill. If you're interested in leaning more into that roaming playstyle, then try out switching Electrocute for Predator and you'll be zooming around the map in no time. Now moving to AD Carry, our S tier is Ash, Misfortune, Caitlyn, Karthus and in God tier we have Samira and Jin. Now in terms of movement there's not a ton of changes to the AD Carry role, Veins move down due to higher elo players being more capable of punishing her, and Lucian and Tristana's lack of range also proves to be a bit more of an issue at Plat Plus. We are seeing some positive movement for Ziggs and Karthus, and of course the new addition of Samira. Now Samira is the newest AD Carry and she is on another level of broken. Even with the hotfix nerf coming in this champ has huge potential when piloted well. In skirmishes and teamfights, she can single handedly wipe the enemy team out once her style grade is up and she pops her ultimate. She's also hard to punish due to her dash and ability to destroy projectiles with a W. Samira is a champion with a high skill cap, so you may struggle to find instant results assuming she even gets through the ban phase, but a practiced player can decimate. When playing Samira, fights can be played a little bit slower as you stack up your style passive, so don't make the mistake of instantly trying to jump in. Wait for a window when the enemy is missing some big cooldowns and find a multi-person inferno trigger and you'll see the 1v9 potential. Now Ash is still firmly in S tier and she's looking like a big staple. She's got high DPS potential, the ability to control wave priority in a lot of matchups and great utility tools between her E, Hawkshot and her ultimate. She fits most team compositions well as a result of this. Look to utilize your range to find favorable trades early and capitalize on your level 6 to find strong all -ins. Blade of the Rune King is still the most popular build and gives you great 1 and 2 item spikes. However, some pro players have started building Essence Reaver first which gives you the early CDR to abuse your ultimate and a strong crit based 3 item spike. Now we've started to see some Twitch cropping up at Worlds and it's a firm favourite in the Chinese super server. Twitch's scaling is on another level. 
even a couple of autos combined with his ultimate can be enough to win a late game team fight. If you manage to get out of the lane in phase, then Twitch really delivers, so be sure to pair him up with a support who can provide enough peel for him. My big suggestion is Rakan. Rakan has been a really popular duo to go with Twitch, and not only providing that peel, but also when Twitch looks to open out a stealth, Rakan can quickly catch up to him and lay down enough CC for him to get the work done and easily win team fights. In terms of build, there's been some variants, but we're highlighting the Manamune build as the raw AD spike it gives you is massive for the cost, and it allows you to capitalize on the huge ratio of his E contaminate. Now, finally, we'll be rounding things out with support. For our S tier, we have Blitzcrank, Sroka, Leona, Lux, Janna, Bard, and Thresh, and for our God tier, we have Lulu and Pantheon. Moving into the Plat Plus Threshold, we've seen a bit of a shift up with Morgana moving down, mostly just due to the fact that she can be countered more heavily by enchanters at this level, and a lot of picks climbing up just to the increased agency supports have at a higher rank. First up, we have Pantheon. This champion is performing really well, and it's down to the fact that he has so many matchups that he can absolutely crush. The likes of Braum, Thresh and Leona can make things tricky but for the most part you can expect to steamroll matchups with your point and clicks done and huge burst damage output. As soon as you find an advantage in bot lane, you can look to roam about with your jungler, setting them up with your stun. On top of that your ultimate is a huge tool to increase your map presence and at higher elos roaming is key to winning the game as a support and Pantheon is great at this. Next up we have Janet and in terms of consistent output, Janet is the queen with the 53% win rate in Plat Plus. Now, Janet isn't just a sit back and shield support, you should take Comet and look to abuse the enemy bot lane with W harass spam and make use of your incredible scaling on the back of your peel tools. She also gets free movement speed to allow you to move around the map, put some vision down and show up when the enemy team doesn't expect it. Janet is also a great matchup into Morgana, so if you find the enemy team blind picking it, be sure to use it as a counter. Now Bard is the king of roaming. I've highlighted the importance of being able to move around the map when discussing Janna and Pantheon, but Bard just does it better. Free movement speed from Chimes and his magical journey are great tools to navigate Summoner's Rift. Look to find advantages in lane by landing stuns and harassing with your meeps, and once you've pushed the wave in, take that time to look for roams towards mid lane. Your ult is a great tool for finding picks on immobile carries, and can also be extremely effective at engaging team fights. Now, Bard is definitely a tricky champion to master, with practice he can be a solo queue powerhouse. And that is it for the patch 1020 tier list from Mobileetics. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section and I'll try and reply and give you the best answers possible. Hope this information has been useful and helped you in your solo queue games and look out for the video next week and I'll see you then.